Greetings, friend. This puzzle is a classic Sudoku created by Sam Kaplman Lines. Sam's on the UK Sudoku team. He's one of the finest setters featured on Kraken the Cryptic. On December 12, 2019, Simon Anthony released a video called How to Solve Hard Sudokus in 10 Minutes, where he solved this puzzle. This video went on to score over 755,000 views, making it one of the 10 most popular videos on Kraken the Cryptic. I'll put a link below to the original video. I think you'll really enjoy this analysis video. I added two positive video moments. And one quick announcement before we begin. I'm planning some YouTube collaborations in the very near future. I'll give some more details at the end of this video. And with that, it's solving time. Simon immediately noticed the setup of the givens. He said the solver should notice an unusual symmetry of the givens around the grid. So instead of just going and doing cross hatching, like he could have solved the one right here right away, he said, look at how these pairs of digits are at the end of the grids and then how these uh, digits like the five and the three interact with these four digits right here and the one and the six interact with these four. So what I love is that Simon's looking at the entire puzzle in the grid and the setup and like how is this puzzle going to reveal and give me uh, you know, candidates to eliminate and cells to solve. Uh, he then starts uh, highlighting the pairs in the middle blocks and says to look at the impact on the digits. Uh, and he proceeds with some cross-hatching and Snyder notation. Of course, Snyder notation being that technique where you mark in blocks where the particular candidate can be in only two possible cells. So first, he notices how the 1 cuts across row 7 and marks 1's right here in the middle uh, in column 5. Then he notices that, hey, this 4 and 5 cut across column 7, and there are only two spots left for 4 and 5 here in block 6. And from there, he cuts right across and goes, well, the 4 and 5 now, since they're in here on row 5, they can't be in row 5 in block 4, so they have to be right there. So you see right now, he already has some naked pairs set up, and he's using it to his full advantage. And then he decides to fill in the rest of block 6. But then he notices, well, 2, 6, 9, but I have a 2 and a 6 right here, so I can, he solves, and he says, oh, 2 and 6 can't be it, so he solves that for 9. And from there, he does notice the 1, finally, that he could solve at the beginning of the puzzle, and then he fills in the rest of block 4. And then looking at the 8s, we got an 8 here, an 8 here, and then one 8 coming up on column 5. He fills in the 8s. And then he starts looking at the 5s and notices, oh, this 5 cutting across. I have two 5s right here and I have the 1s right there. And then he starts looking at 1s and notices that since these 1s point up, there's only two spots left for a one in block two. And then those are kind of a pointing pair that cuts across with this one in row one and this one in column nine. And then he looks at sixes and notices that, uh, that there's only two spots left for a six here in block one. At this point, Simon's kind of looking around the puzzle, seeing where to go next. And so he focuses on column 7 and row 5 because he has uh, at least five of those cells kind of filled in. So like the naked pair, uh, you know there's two spots there and there's two spots here. So there's only three, you know, four spots to worry about here in row 5 and there's only four spots to worry about in column 7. Uh, as he's going down or across row 5, he announces that he needs a 2, 3, 6, and 7 to complete the row and then proceeds to solve a cell by finding a naked single six. So this is our first pause the video moment. Pause the video. See if you can solve for a six in row five while I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, congratulations if you spotted it. The six is right here in row five, column six, because uh, you see there's a one, two, three, four and a five, seven, eight and a nine, that has to be a six.
What I liked about this is that Simon knew where to look next in the grid. You know, instead of focusing on like block one or seven where there wasn't that many much action, he focused on where there's the most restriction. Restriction being where, you know, the fewer candidates available. And he was able to find this uh, naked single. And from there, Simon was able to cut across and he solved the six in block six and of course that two. And then he looked across with these twos and saw there was only one place left for a two in block five. And then he filled in the rest of row five with the three and seven. Uh, and then he started looking at the nines and he filled in the nines across the top. Uh, and then he noticed here in uh, row four, he's like, oh, I'm just gonna fill in the rest of row four. And so he put a five there and a four there. So it's like a four, five, nine uh, naked triple. And then he marked some ones in the bottom of block five. So a little difference here, what you'll notice Simon do is if he sees a cell that has a restriction, like there's only two possibilities, he'll mark that because that'll lead him uh, to kind of look at other restrictions. And it's very efficient. So instead of him marking all the pencil marks across here, he just starts with the ones most likely to yield a, a candidate that he can eliminate or a cell that he can solve. Uh, I see this a lot on his channel. I see a lot on, on Shackman Sudoku. Uh, they also do a really good job with this. And then Simon moves on to come back to column seven. And he's like, oh, I, I still need a one, three, seven, and an eight. And he notices that the uh, eights are restricted on the top. Marks those in. And then he's looking for where he could put uh, uh, right here. He's like, oh, that can only be a three and seven. So he makes that mark in row seven, column seven. And at this point, Simon says, hold on because he's looking down here, but then he also notices there's a lot of digits in row nine and a lot of digits in column nine, and they're, they're different digits, you know, one, three, seven, eight, and this is a two, four, six, five. And so he notices this mismatch of digits and he's able to solve a cell here in block nine. So pause the video, this is our second pause the video moment. See if you can solve the naked single in block nine. Well, I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, congratulations, you're an expert at finding naked singles. Uh, with the hint I gave you here about row nine and column nine, you should have been looking here in row nine, column nine, and it is a naked single nine that you can solve. And that was available at the beginning of the puzzle, but it's pretty hard to see because you have to look across the row and this column uh, to figure out that one. So Simon got it. So after that, Simon finished the rest of column nine. He started up there with this five and a six and the two and the five was the only digits for me. Then he came down here and said, wait, this is, needs a two, four and a six. And that's not gonna really help me. Uh, and he said, that doesn't look very fruitful. So then he focuses again on the nines and he's able to solve another nine by coming over uh, here to column six. And then he notices that you can solve a nine right there. There's a one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, and an eight. So that was a naked single nine. That's a good, it's a good look for him. He's able to solve that. All right. And then he made, uh, then he started looking and he knows, oh yeah, I marked that up here so I can solve that four and I can solve the five and a four down here in block four, and then solve that nine. So he was able to solve those real quick. And then he looked at the uh, the fives. And he said, oh, five, 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 and five. And I can solve for a five right there. And you see, he's, he's starting to use some cross hatching at this point to really get through this puzzle. And then he looked at the fours, and he noticed, uh, And he can mark the fours down there in block seven. And now you, this, these fours create a pointing pair because they're limited to row eight here in block 
seven, and then you have the four down here. So there's only one spot that's left to mark a four in block nine. And so he was able to mark this as a four. Uh, and then he marked the five and the four to finish up his markings up here in block six. And then he focus and go, okay, let me finish uh, column six here. I have a one, eight, one, eight naked pair. And then he jumped over here to column four and, and he started looking at the individual. What do I need? And he noticed that, oh, this is a actually a naked single one. So he tried to mark something, but he realized, oh, the, you know, the eight's already right there. So he's able to solve that for a one. And he able to solve for an eight and for this one. And he completed column six. Um, and then came over and finished with the eights there. And he's, oh, there's only one spot place left to solve in block five which is a five right there in row six, column four. Uh, and then he finished his three, seven markings for column four. Um, and then to notice that since uh, the eight were here in row three, there's only one place left for an eight up there in block three. So he saw that for an eight. He was able to solve for a one. And, you know, take really good advantage of scenario notation when you're doing this because it, it gets really quick. You're not just solving one cell. You're able to solve another one right away and so now he starts working with uh, the ones and he cuts down and sees there's only one place left for a one down here in block nine and then he can play off of that marking here and go to block eight and solve that one as well uh, and from there he's looking again at now the sevens and he comes up here and goes all right I got three to seven three to seven but there's a three right here so that has to be a seven and he's able to solve the three and then he cuts across using the Snyder notation he solves the seven the three and the seven finishes up block five uh continues on with the sevens and he looks he goes oh i got two sevens right here i got a seven right here i, I can solve another seven uh, and this is where you get really quick when you make this transition and go okay using the cells i just solved uh, where else can I, you know, in this grid, can I start solving? So he was able to solve that seven. And he's doing a lot of like hidden naked singles at this point. Um, he's able to solve an eight right there because he knows eights, you know, were in rows two and three. There's only one place left for an eight. And then he focuses on the sixes. Remember, he had two spots for the sixes. So he's able to solve this six right away. Uh, then he finished looking at the sevens and kind of came down. Rows one and two and row, excuse me, columns one and two in row seven. There's a seven, and there's only one place left for seven down there in block nine, and he's able to solve that. Uh, then he made some more markings of twos and sixes uh, to finish off what is remaining in block nine. Uh, and you notice now these twos are a pointing pair, so two and then a two here in row nine. So there's only one place left for a two down in block seven. You see how the pointing pairs are really coming into play? The fours help solve this four, and these twos help solve this two. Uh, and, then he, and then now you're cross-hatching. Two, two, only one place left for a two up here. Uh, then now he's looking, he switched to, since he made this mark of the two fives, now this can't be a two anymore. He was able to solve it for a five right away. And then six above it, and then the six and the two down here in block nine. And it was in this position, with 16 cells remaining, that Simon cracked the puzzle. It's all naked singles from here. So starting here, 2 and 2, you only have only spot for a 2 and a 9 left in block 3. So you saw that 2 and then that 9. And then he came across, you see there's only one place left for a 6. And he just started filling in. And if you were to solve through this, you'd notice that these are all just naked and hidden singles. And I'll just kind of feel through as I finish. Uh, great solve. It wasn't a terribly difficult puzzle. It just needed stuff that I featured in my medium uh, solving tutorial. And I'll put a link uh, right now to that. And at the end, what Simon says, if you want to get better at Sudoku, you need to practice puzzles like this one. All you need to do to be able to solve hard Sudokus is have good technique. So that's the secret, good technique. And I agree. I have two big takeaways to share with you. Uh, after watching this video. First, 
Study the grid to see what the puzzle will give you based on its design. And second, when trying to figure out where to go next, start looking at the most restrictive houses, i.e. the row, the column, or the block. In the video, Simon would actually look at a row and a column at the same time to see how they interacted. He was able to solve and move on from there. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And while you're at it, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to Smart Hobbies so you don't miss any new content. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I am planning some YouTube collaborations so I can offer more value to you, the viewer. Don't be surprised if you see some of your other favorite solvers and setters on this channel in the very near future. And you just might see me on one of their channels. In the meantime, please check out these other videos from my channel. Thank you so much for watching.